Hello, and welcome back to Will's Recap Channel. In today's episode, I'm excited to dive into the heart-pounding world of the 2008 action thriller, Terra Nova. Step into a future where the abolishment of the death penalty leads to a world teeming with perilous criminals. To counteract the rising chaos, the authorities devise an audacious experiment, banishing these felons to a remote island against their will. Join me as we unravel the gripping tale of survival, justice, and unexpected twists in this adrenaline-fueled cinematic experience. Let's get started. On the chilly slopes of an uninhabited island, Jilin endeavors to locate a secure spot for camping. Trekking for miles, he encounters a mishap as he slips into a frigid river. Despite floating for a while, he eventually hauls himself out, resuming his expedition. Fatigue sets in prompting a pause for rest against a substantial rock. Grasping a flower for sustenance, he reflects on the origins of this journey. Jeline is serving a life sentence for eliminating six men. One day, he is summoned to the prison governor's office, where he, along with other inmates, is questioned about his dreams. Moriak desires to glimpse the sea. Yakut wishes to witness the war against China. Obezyanka remains silent. Obezyan aspires to work and become a governor in the prison. Tolia wants to monitor the space station's advancements, and Sipa yearns to see women again. However, Jilin's response remains undisclosed. The governor announces that they have been chosen for transfer to a penal colony. Soon after, all the prisoners are loaded onto a ship. Similar to their previous prison, the inmates are grouped and assigned to cells. Obezian assumes a leadership role, going so far as to kill a man for his bed. When the hatch is sealed and the boat departs, Panic ensues among the prisoners who fear they have been tricked into perishing at sea. Amidst the chaos, Jilin recalls a conversation he had with Sipa back in prison. Sipa, plagued by severe mental issues, would often scribble on the walls and utter nonsensical phrases. However, on a particular day, he spoke of heaven and hell, running out of space, and a third purgatory-like realm being prepared for individuals like them. Jilin initially dismissed it as his usual ramblings, but now he finds himself reconsidering. After a period of chaos, the prisoners manage to calm down and attempt to make the best of the journey by engaging in small talk and sharing meals. However, in the midst of the voyage, a gang breaks free from one of the cells, searching for a fellow inmate. Obezian initially feigns negotiation, but ends up killing the sought-after man, sparking a riot. Prisoners on both sides unleash violence through the bars, except for Starai an elderly man who remains behind, fervently praying. The skirmish is short-lived, the guards swiftly intervene, using a warning shot to quell the unrest and deploying a sleeping gas grenade to render the prisoners unconscious. They eventually reach a desolate island where the inmates are fitted with numbered handcuffs and left on the beach to hear from Mr. Olofsson and Marta, the leaders of the Terra Nova initiative. With the global abolition of the death penalty, prisons are grappling with overcrowding prompting the Russian government to provide this land for the project, backed by international organizations. Commencing today, the prisoners are now settlers under their guardianship, receiving all essential provisions for survival, including a three-month supply of food. Constant satellite surveillance is in place, complemented by communication buoys scattered around. They have the option to use a boat to reach one of these buoys, press the red button, and articulate their needs. A green light signals the approval of the request. Obezian expresses discontent with the constant 24-7 surveillance by hurling a sizable rock in protest, prompting the guards to restore order with warning shots. Marta explains that the buoys serve the dual purpose of requesting departure from the project. Settlers can state their name and provide a reason to leave, and if approved, they'll be sent back to prison. Prior to departure, the guards scatter numerous keys onto the sand, each numbered to correspond with the prisoner's handcuffs. A frenzy ensues as the prisoners dash for the keys, engaging in fierce skirmishes. Jilin and Sipa wisely refrain from direct involvement, opting to retrieve keys dropped by others. Starry, too, elects to stay back, observing as one gang strategically forms a barrier around the keys, barring their rivals. Another group seizes the opportunity to raid crates left by the guards, arming themselves and launching an attack on the gathered crowd. In the end, Ali's gang seizes command of the chaos, 
Ali secures a jacket and quality shoes for himself and Storai before selecting a man to dispatch on the boat, and the three men attempting to reach the buoy perishing in the sea. The remaining prisoners gather at the warehouse, initiating the distribution of supplies. Obezian seizes the opportunity to forcefully remove his handcuffs using tools found in the warehouse. Jeline, meanwhile, packs essential items into a bag and listens to Sipa expressing doubts about the three-month food supply. Jeline decides to strike out on his own, hoping to survive and discover an escape from the island. He explores until he finds a snow-free area with a rocky formation for shelter. Settling there, he reflects on his family gazing at a hidden picture in his prison uniform. Overwhelmed by longing, he falls asleep with tears in his eyes. Later, he awakens to squealing sounds. Rodents have infested the supplies, devouring his food and bag. Taking refuge from the rain under the rock formation, Jilin starts a fire for warmth and boils water. Once the rain subsides, Jilin catches a bird and roasts it over the fire. Sipa discovers him and attempts to steal his knife during their conversation, but Jilin notices and retrieves it. Sipa offers salt and assistance in exchange for some meat, a deal Jilin accepts. While Sipa gathers more wood, he notices the family picture hung on the rocks and playfully blows a kiss at Jilin's wife. They share the roasted bird, and after finishing their meal, Sipa walks to the cliff's edge, revealing his fear of jumping. Curious, he questions Jilin about his reluctance to die. Jilin explains his determination to stay alive due to his deceased family. He wishes to be buried beside them. After falling asleep, Jilin wakes to discover that Sipa has stolen the family picture for inappropriate use. Enraged, Jilin assaults Sipa and pushes him off the cliff. Surprisingly, Sipa survives the fall, landing on a hill below. Despite this altercation, they continue their exploration of the island together. Sipa entertains himself with debris in the water, while Jilin attempts fishing. However, their only discovery in the water is an unsettling aquatic centipede that unnerves Sipa. As they continue exploring, Jilin is astonished to stumble upon part of a seaplane among the rocks. A bit further up the hill, they discover the entire seaplane, sparking hope in Jilin, a former pilot. However, the two men lack the strength to move it. Disheartened, they return to their shelter. Jilin starts a fire using matches from the warehouse but the smoke proves toxic. Moving away from the fire, he drags the sleeping Sipa with him. Despite Jilin's efforts to wake him, Sipa remains incoherent, and Jilin realizes the cold may soon claim their lives. Returning to the base to seek coal, Jilin and Sipa find life there far from easy. Obezian and his gang dominate, establishing a routine and rationing supplies. Obezian, now calling himself governor, confines those not in their group to the barracks. Prisoners are allowed out for a brief walk in a confined area, reminiscent of real prisons. Estenets supervises from the watchtower, and upon their return, they must run, as whoever is the last would face death to become food for their future sustenance. Jilin and Sipa locate the coal box and discover the remnants of a fire. Exhausted from their journey, they succumb to the cold and rest by the fire, falling asleep. However, their slumber is interrupted when Sipa hears noises. The gang is approaching with their latest captive for consumption. Sipa hides behind a rock, but Jilin remains exposed. Sipa attempts to rescue him, but they are captured by Obezian's men. Returned to the base, Obezian deliberates their punishment for taking supplies. Yakut, seeking leniency, mentions their alliance during the ship altercation, leading to Estenets insulting him. In response, Yakut strikes Estenets, prompting the gang to retaliate and earning Yakut a place in the barracks with Jilin and Sipa. As they wander around, Estenets signals it's time to return. Jilin opts to stay, but Sipa retrieves him, and they helplessly witness the capture of the last man standing. Tied to a pole, the man pleads for water as his final request. Out of compassion, Sipa offers him a cup before the man meets his demise. Later, during a discussion before bedtime, the group contemplates the prospect of rebellion. Uncertain about the risks, Shram persuades them it's worth attempting. The following morning, Tolya reveals to Obezian that he has set up a covert trap in his workshop to catch potential thieves. Following their daily walk, Estenets attempts to gather the group for the usual routine, but this time, only two men comply. The others unite, 
and Yakut hurls a rock at Stinets to silence him. Jilin approaches Obezian with a proposal. If they are allowed to go to the buoy to request food, he will disclose the location of the plane he discovered. Obezian agrees to the deal and opens the gate to release them. As Tolia and Jilin join two other men on the boat, Obezian asks his men about Jilin. Discovering that Jilin was a pilot and that his family died in a plane crash, Obezian also learns about Jilin's crime of killing flight dispatchers at the airport with a rifle. This act was categorized as murder in a state of severe emotional agitation, leading Obezian to believe that Jilin carries a burden of guilt. Once the boat is a sufficient distance away, Obezian reneges on the deal, ordering the group to return to the barracks and resuming the oppressive routine. Yakut attempts to confront them, but is swiftly killed, prompting Obezian to capture another man and reinstate the game. The group, realizing that a direct fight would be futile against Obezian's armed men, rushes back to the barracks. Meanwhile, at sea, one of the men falls off the boat, but he is rescued just in time. Tolia reaches the buoy, hoping for help, but it's broken, and even his tools prove ineffective. Returning to the shore, Jeline informs Obezian that food is on its way, but Obezian remains skeptical since there was no green confirmation light. Tolia mentions the plane again, but Obezian dismisses it. Obezianka mimics the plane gesture, distracting Obezian, and Tolia seizes the opportunity to attack him from behind, leading to his demise. Amrbek and Arjanov, members of Obezian's group, eliminate the remaining gang members, and Estenets manage to escape. Jalin instructs them to free the men from the barracks, assuring them that food is en route, and the broken light prevents its confirmation. The group remains doubtful, pointing out the potential food supply from the bodies, but Tolia insists on a proper burial. Jilin reiterates the plane's existence, and eventually, Amerbeck and Arjanov agree. They release the prisoners, explaining that they'll wait a few days for the food, emphasizing a cooperative approach, and plan to organize a group to rescue the plane. The plan includes constructing a hangar, slowly repairing the plane, and using it as a means of escape later on. Unexpectedly, SIPA disrupts their plans, asserting the absence of a satellite while crafting an SOS message in the sand with three bodies. Later, Estenets makes a return to the base, and adhering to the new peacekeeping rules, they choose to overlook his past actions, opting to share their food with him. Jalin leads a group of men toward the plane, and their spirits soar as they witness the veracity of his claims. As a team, they dismantle it for convenient transportation, carrying the components back to the base. Eventually, Marta arrives on the island accompanied by a group of guards. Using gas to deter the men, they permit Jilin to approach and engage in a discussion regarding the list of items they've requested. Perplexed about the gas request, Jilin clarifies that it's for the generators, intended for wind power, but rendered ineffective during the polar night. Secretly, they aim to use the gas for the plane. Seizing the opportunity, Jilin inquires about the unacknowledged SOS message from SIPA. Marta elucidates that their satellite operates on infrared technology, detecting heat signatures, but unable to discern written messages. She also questions the purpose of people venturing far from the base a few days ago, to which Jilin fabricates a response, claiming they were fishing. Distrusting Jilin's initial claim of fishing due to the lack of fish in the area, he fabricates another story asserting that they've been subsisting on centipede-like creatures, eliciting shock from Marta. The interrogators press further, questioning the number of remaining colonists among the original 206, a query Zillin finds suspicious given the supposed capabilities of their satellite. He asserts that 87 individuals persist, many afflicted by illness, yet none wish to abandon the project and return to incarceration. Before departing, and he hands her a few sheets of paper, urging her to provide the group with ample support. After the guards depart and leave behind the newly delivered supplies, Jilin and comrades test the gas in the hidden hangar, rejoicing as they confirm the functionality of the plane. Subsequently, they observe the arrival of a fresh group of American prisoners as the guards and Marta exit the island. This new group, led by a formidable man, spurns Jilin's attempt at a handshake and instead strikes him, 
instigating a fierce brawl between the two factions. The confrontation is brutal, with both sides resorting to deadly measures. To protect Jilin, Sipa whisks him away to seek refuge in the workshop. As one of the Americans pursues them, he inadvertently falls into Tolia's trap, resulting in his immediate demise. In a confrontation between Arjanov and the American leader, Arjanov finds himself overpowered. However, Amurbek intervenes, killing the imposing man. Simultaneously, the surrounding buildings ignite in flames. Unbeknownst to them, the heads of the project observe these events. As the situation spirals out of control and over 40% of the colony is lost, Marta contacts the central office and receives instructions to enact Code Naked Island. This directive brings a contingent of guards to the island, who proceed to shoot the remaining prisoners. Concurrently, Marta burns the letters of Jilin. Fortunately, a handful of survivors, including Jilin, Sipa, Arjanov, and Tolya, manage to evade the chaos by hiding in the mountains or the hangar. As a united trio, they push the plane into position. However, as they prepare to board, Sipa bids them farewell and dashes towards the hills, determined to leap into the ocean without fear. The remaining duo successfully takes off in the plane, with Jilin skillfully navigating past the gunfire from the guards. Tragically, his two companions succumb to the bullets, yet Jilin emerges unscathed, soaring away into the realm of freedom. Hope you enjoyed the movie. Your thoughts are valuable to us, so feel free to share them in the comments below. If you liked what you saw, consider subscribing and sharing to show your support. Thank you for watching.